Hi guys, this is Mrs. Polson. This is our first round of notes. Um, and so I want to just talk to you just briefly about how this is going to work. Uh, I have recorded, pre-recorded all my PowerPoint notes. Many of them you will take at home, not in class. So you have to have access to YouTube like you are right now. And once you search one, many of the others will be pulled up. So you shouldn't have difficulty searching. I'll try to give you guys keywords to help you find the um, note program video. But just feel free to pause along the way, replay, anything you need to do to help you learn. That frees up a little bit of time in class for us to work with the content in a little bit more hands-on, interactive way. Okay, so Earth Science Unit 1. It's called The Environment. We cover Chapter 1 and a small section of Chapter 17 dealing with air pollution. Earth as a system science. There's a, there's a term that goes with that, Earth system science. Three words. Earth is a collection of parts that are connected and interact with one another. <laughs> so you can see here in the image you've got air, water, land, and life all interconnected for our planet Earth. Clicking on this allows you to see um, the classzone.com that goes with the textbook has a wonderful interactive website. Feel free to click on any of the links. Most of them will come from that, from that site. There are two types of systems, open and closed. Open systems are systems that freely exchange matter and energy with their surroundings. So they freely exchange matter and energy. A fish tank, seen here, is pulling in air from its environment through the bubbler and also water evaporates out, which is matter leaving. So you have matter coming, matter going. Energy, I can see the light from that tank coming to me. So that's energy coming out of that system. Plus there's heat from the room that's probably being transferred into that system as well. Open system, matter and energy exchange. Closed system is the opposite. Energy can come and go, but matter cannot enter or leave. So closed system is, I have here this life in a jar. The top is sealed. Sunlight energy can come in. Heat energy can go out. But nothing, no air, no matter, nothing will be exchanged for the time that it's closed. So therefore, that's a closed system. And I'm sure you can come up with other examples. Um, most systems in nature are going to be what, do you think? If you were thinking open, you are correct. So think of like a, a forest or a swamp. You have rain coming in to the system. You have gases being exchanged out. So that's definitely matter examples going in and out. You have sunlight coming in and you have heat exchanged with the atmosphere. So open system is what most natural systems are going to be. Closed system, however, is what Earth is considered. And there are exceptions to this, but for the most part, the matter that we have in our planet stays put. Very little is lost to the um, surrounding space. So essentially, it's closed. And they have that, your book talks about that, and they include that little word, essentially. And that's because there is a little bit, but for the most part, it's negligible because of how much mass our planet actually holds. And this is a very important concept the idea of closed system because later we're going to talk about earth resources and I want you to remember this closed system idea the fact that we're stuck with what we have so what we do with what we have is pretty important and we'll talk more about that in unit two um, this slide is really just showing in a, another example of the ocean being an open system you have evaporation and precipitation bringing matter into the system and this is showing you solar radiation and latent heat leaving so radiation coming in, that is energy exchange as well. But, but remember, energy can be exchanged with either an open or a closed, but matter can only be exchanged with an open. So this is essentially um, just an example. You can write it down if you want to or you don't have to. But solar radiation passes through the atmosphere and absorbed by the ocean. That's energy coming in. Evaporates water from the ocean. That's matter going out. And the water vapor enters the atmosphere. It carries with it the heat. So that's more energy. Closed system example, you can see this image of our Earth. 
it does, we do see those red and yellow arrows representing energy inputs and energy outputs. Um, I believe this is supposed to represent our atmosphere, which is really kind of crazy because it's not that thick, but whatever. Um, the Earth system as a whole is a closed system. Virtually no mass is exchanged. Energy, like solar radiation in the form of shortwave energy, passes from the sun through the atmosphere to the surface of our planet. And then the Earth radiates radiation in the form of long wave back out to space. The short wave and long wave, you do not need to know for unit one test. We will need, you will need to know it for our climate change unit, which is unit four. Energy passes across the Earth system boundary, but not mass, making it a closed system. Okay, a next section in our notes, um, now that you know what Earth system science is and that there's open and closed systems, are the four spheres. There is actually more spheres than four, but you are going to learn the four main ones. The reason why it's a sphere is because that's what our planet is, and so that's what we refer to it as. But <clears throat> energy will move back and forth among them. The first one is atmosphere, which is a gaseous envelope surrounding the Earth. A nice analogy is that if the Earth was an apple, the skin of the apple would be the atmosphere. So even though this image is misleading because it makes it look like it's so very thick, this image is merely a model showing the layers of the, of the atmosphere, not a true indication of the, the thickness. This is where all of our gases are going to occur in that layer. Primarily we have nitrogen, 80%, and then we have oxygen, which is roughly 20%, then we have carbon dioxide and others that make up less than um, 1%. Ozone gases also occur there, and all of the weather phenomena occur there. Another sphere is the geosphere. Geo means Earth, so this is the physical features of Earth, all except water that belongs to a different sphere. So we have the crust, the mantle, and the core, the layers of our planet. And then also we need to include rocks, mountains, beaches, ocean basins, layers of the Earth, minerals. Um, question to ponder, is the geosphere ever changing? Think about it. Think about it. Wait for it. The answer is yes. And we have erosion from wind and water. Um, we have plate tectonics that are creating trenches and mountains. Um, we have deposits that are made. And we have glaciers that move through and um, plow through an area, creating different landscapes. Another sphere is a hydrosphere, and I'm probably going to show you in class a little analogy of where all of our water is on our planet, but hydro means water, and so that's all the water on our, in our Earth system. So we have the oceans that make up about 97% of all the water. We have lakes, rivers, groundwater, glaciers, and water vapor. You're not going to be required to know all the little numbers, but you do need to know that the oceans host most of the water on this planet. I love this satellite image because it shows many of the different versions of our water cycle. So we have um, mountain areas that have snow caps on them. You can see the fingery tributaries of the river systems that occur there that are draining into this ocean, which is all part of the hydrosphere. And then you have the clouds, which is all part of the hydrosphere as well. Whoops, if you didn't catch that, there's clouds there. Um, let's talk numbers. Most of the fresh water, so we already said that 97% of the water on our planet is salty, right? 97% salt. That means 3% is fresh water. Of that 3%, 70% of it is frozen in a glacial ice. Only half of a percent of fresh water is actually going to be usable for us because the rest is trapped. Groundwater, um, in our bodies, in life, in the atmosphere as vapor, um, certainly locked as glaciers. But thankfully, all water is recycled. And in some areas of our planet, it's recycled faster than other areas. <clears throat> the last sphere is the biosphere. And this is going to be all life, so anything alive. Um, bacteria, bees, insects, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, 
fish and birds, all of these things are alive and they all belong to the biosphere. Please remember that energy moves back and forth among all of the four spheres. We'll talk about sphere interactions in a second. So what makes up the biosphere? Everything alive. Plants, mammals, insects, fish, birds, bacteria, all of it. So um, you're going to be required to provide an example of an interaction between the, the earth spheres. So I'm going to provide you with some examples here, but I'd like you to come up with some different ones for um, class assignment if, the teach, if I tell you you need to. So atmosphere with biosphere, you always are going to say some kind of noun that exists in these two spheres. So you're going to go back to your notes and you're going to look at what's part of the atmosphere, what's part of the biosphere. Keeping in mind that atmosphere includes any weather phenomenon too. So like, um, and it doesn't matter which order they come in. And then you also want to include a verb, an action verb, that's showing an interaction. When you have an interaction, you have a verbiage. You have some verbiage that's taking place. So um, humans breathe oxygen. Humans, I'm going to label that bio because that belongs to the biosphere. And then oxygen is part of the atmosphere. And I'll just give that a little label, atmo, to show my teacher that I know what I'm talking about. Hydrosphere and geosphere. Hydro is all the water, geosphere is all the earth structures, so um, a river erodes the banks. The banks would be the ground, the, the soil part, that's part of the geosphere, so I would label that geo, and I would label the river hydro. Be sure to let your teacher know which one it is. I'm going to give you one last one, even though I know there's more. Um, atmosphere with hydrosphere. Wind pushes the ocean forming currents. So wind would be part of the atmosphere. Ocean is part of the hydrosphere. Get it? You'll be practicing this in, in class if you haven't already. There's a few more that you can do on your own. And that is it. We'll start with cycles on the next round.